Would you drink your own blood? I wish I could say yes. Step at a time. It's a soft no. It's hard. It's a soft no. Do -do -do -do. Today we're gonna talk about periods. I'm asking you, Clara. When I say the word period, what are some shapes that you make? Oh, this. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Back. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Oh. oh. Also, not all people who have periods are women, and not all women have periods. Trans friends, I see you. What I really want to get into today is reframing the way that we feel about our periods. I have learned some things that have taken me from feeling like an absolute piece of every single month to feeling like a wizard made of magic. First of all, what are periods? Throughout the month, the lining of your uterus gets thicker and fluffier as it prepares to host a fertilized egg. Now, if the fertilized egg doesn't come, then your uterine lining starts to shed, and that's what your period is. Out of the four weeks of a typical menstrual cycle, we're going to focus on the last two weeks, because those final two weeks are really the weeks that get a really wrap. Let's get straight into it. Week three, we have the luteal phase or PMS. What happens when we're PMSing? We get judged from other people and ourselves for our premenstrual energy, for our emotionality. We just want to go inwards and have alone time, and we're shamed for that. Our PMS is seen as uncontrollable and bad and unproductive. Oh, intim hestera. Week four. Menstrual phase. We're in the bleeding phase. We're often made to feel dirty, undesirable, weak, lazy, smelly, gross. We feel like we need to really push through and we might feel guilty for needing rest and relaxation and extra TLC. Tender love and care. I remember being taught that we don't pray because we're dirty in this time. I have now reconstructed that, that the reason that we are exempt from praying five times a day and holding such a strict schedule is because we're given permission to rest because this is a new season that's happening in our body I love you it's time to rest so we want to go from periods to wow periods a lot number one Menstrual blood is the only blood that is shed without wound or war. It's literally lifeblood. This is what life would have been made of that month. Number two, women's bodies are synchronized with the moon. Before the days of birth control and artificial lighting and airplanes and hormones and technology and all of that stuff, most women would bleed with the new moon. They would cleanse and renew and then they would reach max fertility as the moon was full. Yo, that's so cool. There is a giant cosmic ball in the sky that literally controls the tides of the oceans, which make 75% of our planet. And then we have 70% water and this cosmic ball is controlling the tides. And then this giant cosmic ball is also rotating around the earth and we're synced to it. One moon cycle, so one, one trip for the moon around the earth is 29.5 days. And an average person's menstrual cycle is 29.5 days. Come on, come on, that's what? That's a lot. We're wizards. Wizards. Thalatha, in many ancient civilizations, a woman's moon time was treated as sacred. In Greek, Roman, Celtic, Egyptian, Hindu, Aboriginal, they refer to the sacred nature of the menstrual blood flow and they really look at it as life and the bed of creation. It's magic. Magic. Another thing that has really, really helped me reframe the way that I look at the moon cycle and the magic of it is to think of the phases of my cycle as seasons. The metaphor is very much grounded in nature and acknowledging us as nature. PMS, the luteal phase, is autumn, el kharif. We are preparing to shed the lining of the uterus. We're preparing for the leaves to fall down. We're preparing for death. And in this time, hikmat dakhiliya is really at its height, so it's time to listen to what's going on inside. This is a great time for therapy sessions. It's a great time for asking for extra tenderness and care. This is not a time to have big or stressful conversations. It's not a time to make big, big decisions in your life. It's really a time of inward looking and rest. 
And then we have the menstrual phase, and this is the winter time. So this is time for solitude, if that's what you're being called to. This is time for deep rest. Challenge yourself to be okay with no movement on the days that you feel like your body really, really needs to rest. What would you say to people who say women are unfit to hold high office or hard jobs because our dainty bodies require rest? I would say the fact that you think that rest is problematic is the problem. And a big f you to you, capitalism. That is pleasure, to heal your relationship with yourself, to feel good about yourself, to feel good about what your body is doing. That is such a pleasurable experience. And remember we talked about the erotic being something that's generative, that's bringing more of life into manifestation. There is nothing more erotic than your body preparing to create a child. So honor that lifeblood, honor it. So I have two assignments for you. One of them is the next time that you get up at a restaurant or somewhere in public to change your tampon or your pad or whatever it is. I know that I always do the sleeve, you know, I go, uh, I do that. No more of that. I'm gonna do no more of that. I'm just gonna pull my tampon out and walk to bathroom. That's the practice of acknowledging that your period isn't something that you should be ashamed of. So the second practice is a practice that my teacher Alana Meda taught me. So the next time that you are on your period, collect your blood in a diva cup or a menstrual cup and every day pour some of that blood into a clear jar. Think about what is the magic that you are creating or what are you cleansing yourself of because this blood has energy, it has power, it didn't make Make a baby this month, but don't let its energy go to waste. And then at the end of your cycle, thank it and give that blood back to the earth. Don't go to your house plant and like, yeah, pour blood on top of it, no. And also just like, be smart. Did you know that menstrual blood is high in plant nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium? Wow. That's cool. As you're pouring it, focus on your intention and your prayer and what you're looking to bring to life. And just focus on the fact that you're using lifeblood to give more life to a plant and that's pretty awesome. So awesome. Are you going to pour blood on your tree? Terrible ending. I loved it. Okay. <laughs>